Hi everybody, my name is Pierluigi Patro, I'm the Versailles Software and the Software team. Uh, thanks for joining today with the last uh, webinar about uh, QML integration with the, the can side. We, to the Canvas supporting Qt, we will analyze a QML application. We will deal about uh, the QML C++ integration. We will see some sample code. Then we will go back to the original example that we showed the last uh, uh, webinar, and we understand we will understand how to integrate an engine control unit. All of this will bring us to put everything together and having a dynamic application that will show us how the QML work with this backend. First of all, let me introduce Varsite. Varsite is uh, the number one arm based SOM vendor. Uh, we are selling over 1 million units per year. We are on the market since 70 years, 17 years and uh, we have more than 5,000 uh, customers worldwide. We have a very diversified and product portfolio with extensive longevity and compliance policies. Uh, we are the only song vendor that NXP certified as platinum and uh, uh, with this partnership we are now supporting the whole IMX8 product line. We have internal production lines that allow us to provide to the customer cost and performance optimized configuration. All of our some are fully configurable. We have been certified ISO 9001 2015 and medical side ISO 13485 2016. We have a high quality customer support with long-term longevity and an ecosystem of partner to provide the customer a complete end-to-end -end solution and speed up the time to market. Let's uh, focus for a while uh, on our uh, main two P2P product families. The original one was the Varson family uh, that uh, was born with uh, Varson MX6 and Varson Solo. We added uh, to it initially just the Varson 6 UL and now we have the world uh, uh, IMX8 family. When we say pin to pin, we, say, we mean that uh, we can provide you a single board, the symphony board that can run using all of this song. For sure, you will need to have dedicated this piece, but from a harder perspective, you have the chance to upgrade or downgrade according to your need, keeping uh, a pin to pin compatibility. The same can happen with the Dart family that currently include. Uh, IMX8 M Mini, IMX8 M, and IMX8 M Plus. When we talk about pin to pin compatibility, we mean that we selected in between the available options of the pin multiplexing a set of options that allow us to have a compatibility among the songs. For sure, you can customize in the, in the way you like all of the pin configuration. The one that we provide in our demo, this piece, uh, allow us to provide you compatibility modes. So now let's try to move uh, to the real webinar. And this is the agenda. Uh, we will start with a quick summary of what is Qt Quick. The last time we went through what is Qt Quick, how it's structured, the basic concepts about rectangle, anchors, components. And at the end of the webinar, we provided you the, the design of a, a dashboard with the basic concepts of the QML applied to our target. What we will do today is understanding how we can make this image, this uh, set of components dynamic. So, we will introduce a kind of backend that will control and will uh, uh, make these values uh, changeable and uh, update the graphical interface. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's try to have uh, a quick understanding of uh, the, uh, the backend. In a real application, in a real dashboard, you would have uh, 
an engine control unit, something that uh, in the car is uh, able to provide uh, calm messages, even up to 30 messages per second, and update the dashboard. So we will receive information from sensors, from uh, devices that uh, will be used to update the graphical interface. Let's try to understand how the QT framework and the, and the canvas can be in, included in this perspective. Uh, the QT framework, as we said the last time, provides a, a big amount of tools, libraries, uh, and specifically also provide the canvas support. These tools are extremely optimized and efficient and they are then they have been designed to manage a big amount of uh, messages the main two classes that would be involved in a real case would be the cucumbers device and the cucumbers frame and uh, these two classes and uh, are part of the qt of the qt libraries as uh, dedicated classes for the canvas management even from a quick look to these classes, you may easily understand that these classes have nothing to do with the graphics. So the QML graphic that we are going to design is not able to understand the library itself, but the library instead will help the QML to be dynamic. So what we are going to do is to understand how to integrate the C, C++ classes within the QML code that describe our interface. As we said, in the real world, we would have a, an engine control unit, but we can't here for, uh, for the demo that we are going to provide you uh, have a real car. So we are going to design a kind of uh, engine control unit emulator in the form of a basic class that will send uh, updates like as it was receiving CAM messages and decoding it. For a while, let's open a parenthesis on the canvas. Uh, if you are, find, you are looking for additional information about the canvas supporting Qt, you may refer to the official Qt documentation online. It's every, everything is public. Very side side, all of our Versom family uh, provide a native canvas uh, interface. When I say native, I, I mean that the SOM provide the canvas, even for that system on chip that do not provide uh, the CAN interface. This is achieved uh, using uh, a specific SPI chip, the MCP2518, that has been tuned and optimized to work up to one megabit within the SOM. For the DART family that we cited before, uh, for the song that do not for the system and chip that do not support natively the, the, the canvas interface we actually put this on the evaluation kit uh, sorry on the evaluation board and uh, we do provide in our b speed complete support everything is already tested and very efficient so from this perspective, this clause what uh, NXP, sorry, what um, Qt and uh, Varisite may provide for the canvas. Let's try now to understand a QML application. This is the classical QML starting point. It's actually a C++ code. What is going on is that uh, this code is in charge to uh, call an engine and have an instance of an engine that is going to wrap somehow the QML and connect the QML to the real application. Then the engine will be actually loaded and the application will be actually executed. Let's try to understand deeply what this means. First of all, we need to, uh, we need to note that uh, every QML application has a C++ part. The QML application itself uh, is not able to run. So we need some C++ code that uh, call the QML and uh, let it run in a sandbox. If you remember, we talked about 
this in the previous webinar, the QML, the QML itself can only run within a sandbox. The sandbox is actually generated through the main C++ code. Inspecting the code, you can see that uh, uh, this is just a simple C++ application that loads the QML from a graphical perspective. How this is achieved? Let's go back to the previous slide. So we have an engine, line 10, that is that will be a kind of wrapper. The engine will be linked to the URL that actually is the QML file that we designed it. And we will connect this engine to our application. I'm talking about line 13 and 14. Uh, the application is a classical GUI application that we declared at line, at line 8. And at the end of the procedure, the engine will be loaded. We are at 919. And the application is actually started. What I mean by started, uh, and I, I'm referring to 921. Basically, we need to uh, load the, the QML and start uh, the events loop. So Qt, the Qt framework will start managing all, all of the events and uh, organizing the communication between the C++ part and the QML part. That, as I said, is running a kind of sandbox. The C++ acts as a, a kind of virtual hypervisor. Let's try to an analyze better the connect call. This is part of the historical Qt background. <clears throat> was already present in the Qt4 uh, APIs. So the connect, generally speaking, refers to signals and slot. The main thing is that every object, whatever it is, is supposed to have some possible signals and some possible slot, where the slot is a kind of callback function. So just to summarize, whenever we create, we want to create a link between objects, we need to have an object that generates a signal, an event, a kind of event, and a different object that can register to that event and manage it. This kind of registration is managed through the Connect API. We have the also here, we are adding the reference to the signal slot official page of the Qt documentation. This is a very important uh, subject of all of the Qt philosophy. <clears throat> so whenever an object is expected to reply a signal, its own specific slot is called, and whenever an event occurs, a specific uh, signal is generated. This is the link between uh, all of the object and is managed through the connect, as I said. Okay, now let's go on and let's try to understand how the QML and the C++ can be integrated. First of all, let's define a kind of possible target. Uh, we want to export C++ objects within the QML. Apparently, we may want to export a QML object within the C++. From the C++, we may want to set QML properties or call QML methods, but we also need to connect QML signals from C++, if we say to the connect. Last possible chance is exporting a whole C++ class in the QML. This option is, uh, for, is Nowadays, standard, but it was actually introduced not from the beginning, but just from uh, a cute by the side. Let's start with the first uh, possibility. I mean, let's try to expose the, uh, some attribute of the C++ in the QML. As we said at the beginning, we are going to create a kind of engine control unit that will be defined as a, in terms of a class. Okay, what is going on is that uh, we need to declare the class within the C++ code, and this is the line engine control unit 
with the declaration of the instance. And we also need to declare the, uh, what I called the previously, the wrapper to the QML, the engine. So the QML application engine is the wrapper for the QML. And in order to expose a variable from C++ within the QML, we can uh, refer to the root context method of the engine that can allow us to set a, a property that will refer to a specific object. Just to summarize, we have an object, an instance of an object declared within the C++ code, and we are saying, okay, this specific object will be visible in the QML code with the name underscore engine underscore control underscore you. Then we will proceed as usual. So we will load the QML, we will start the application events and whatever. So the, the key function here is the root context that is used to export an instance from the C++ within the QML code. Now, let's try to understand which are the basic uh, uh, capabilities. We can export uh, um, properties, we can export method of a class, and we can export signals. So the QML code with the code that we've seen before, we will be able to access all of these items of a specific class. In order to achieve this target, the class must be created as QU object derived. And uh, we need to call the root context method in the C++ code to export uh, the, the, the instance of the class. Once done, the QML code is able to access the properties of the C++ class that we described before. Another option, sorry, when, when we say that the, the, the properties will be accessible, we also mean that uh, we need to define uh, the properties within the class. How can this be achieved? Uh, mainly there are two ways. Uh, the first line that you can see is the extended way. So we have the declaration of uh, a property that is author. We have uh, a read function that is once again named author, a write function that is named set author and the notify event that is author changed. This is the extent, one of the possible extended forms. There is also a simplified form or a more compact form that uh, is uh, basically the same, but we don't need to declare the read and write, uh, um, the read and write function. The compiler will do it by himself. We will declare just the, the outer. The reference within the, the class, uh, the, member, the private member of the class that will refer this property, and the event that will notify the change. Let's see in the first case how will happen, how will uh, um, the code will be written. So, in the extended form, the class is supposed to expose the set outer function the author function to return a value and uh, uh, the event author change. Just keep in mind that uh, since uh, the class must have uh, a kind of internal reference to store the data, we also need to declare in the private, uh, in the private section uh, something to store the data that is the equivalent of the second uh, form the M outer, the member that is in the internal member of the class, must be somehow declared to have a place where to store and uh, read the, uh, the value of the string. What about uh, the outer change the notification? Uh, keep in mind that uh, it always is supposed to always start with small letter and uh, the changed uh, suffix is always supposed to start with capital letter. When we export such a property 
within the QML code, the QML code will manage an identical signal that will be named on the name of the property starting with capital letter and then change it. So we reported here the, the possibilities, but we also reported here the chance for you to look at the official documentation about the property system from Q. So till now we have seen how to declare a class that can be declared within the C++ code and can be accessed within the QML. Now let's try to do the opposite way. So we have an object declared in the QML code and we want to make it accessible from the C++ code. Just remind that every QML object is derived, derived from a Q object. And this is a, a similarity because if you, if you remember, the class that we wanted to export from the C++ to the QML was supposed to be Q object derived. And this is the, the other side of the, of the connection. Also, the QML objects are always seen as Q object in the C++ code. The only constraint that you have is that you're supposed to declare the object, for the object, the object name property. Because once you load the engine and you wrap the whole QML, within your, your engine instance, then you can extract a specific object, QML object as Q object, just using the root object method and referring to the object name. It's a kind of uh, uh, search within the tree of the QML for a specific, uh, for a specific object. And in this example, we see that we declare the QML side, we declare the object with a color yellow. And in the C++ code, we are setting the color to red. This is the way we can, from the C++, access the QML and change it. Now, let's try to see some sample code. This is a standard QML declaration. We have a rectangle, we have its own ID. We use the object name to make this object accessible from the uh, C++, if the C++ want, obviously. But we also refer to uh, the my author, the my author um, object that we will see it's actually a C++ object that has been made visible to the QML. Now, in the, in the second line, the object name, this is the only requirement to make it visible in the C++. And in the last lines, we are seeing how something that has been exported from the C++ to the QML may be referred in the QML. Let's go deeper and uh, try to understand how this can be achieved in the main C++ code. As I said, we have the QGUI application, we have the QML application engine that will wrap the QML. We declare an instance of the my message class that we will see immediately after this slide. And we want to make the my author uh, instance visible within the QML. So we use the root context call with the usual Syntax. Once we, the engine is loaded, we can also pick a specific object of the QML, extracting it, and eventually set the, a specific property to something different. Then we can start uh, the, the event loop. Let's have a, a, a quick view also to the, to the my message class the one that is managing the author. We have the Q property that we declared before. We've uh, the read and write, so the whole uh, 
capability to define the, the, the function as we want, the signal out of change it. And this is how it appears. So this is quite standard for what we, we've seen till now. So summarizing, we have seen how to export something that has been declared in the, Q, in the C++ within the QML. And we have seen how to export something that has been declared in the QML within the C++ code. The last option is something that has been introduced starting from Qt 5.7. And it's a, uh, and then we were exporting a whole class within the QML. It's a bit different from what we have seen before, because we are not declaring something and exporting in the QML. We are saying it, that a specific class can be exported as a whole uh, black box within the QML. We are not declaring an instance of the class. We are exporting directly the class. The keyword here is the QML register type followed by the class name. This is a template and the uh, parameter that expected the package name, the major and minor version, and uh, the name of the object. Once we have done, as usual, we load the engine and we start the application. How this is mapped the QML side. Keep in mind uh, the, the lower rectangle where we declare the, the package name, the numbers for the major and minor version in the backend. In the QML, it appears as an import. My example is backend 1.0 and the declaration backend with ID backend. So this allows us to declare to declare in the QML an object that has not been declared in the C++. We are exporting from the C++ to the QML the whole class. And this allows us to declare the objects directly in the QML. Also in this case, the key property must follow the rules that we described before. Same for the signals. Additionally, we need to remind about the package name and the package version that we want to consider. Now let's go back to our uh, last one of the last slide that we will show it uh, during the previous webinar, where we pointed out all of the single items that we were supposed to animate. So we were talking about uh, the speed, uh, both the, the, the yellow arc and the number in the center, the kilometer done, the, the gear, the date, the fuel level, level the, the LEDs, whatever. How can we manage all of these values? First of all, we need to create uh, the engine control unit. As we said, uh, it will not be a real engine control unit it will be a kind of emulator but in any clay case we need to satisfy the rule that we've seen before so it must be a class the q object will arrive it with q properties that will link to the to the um, items that you want to animate uh, here is the, li the list of the q properties and uh, Basically, what's going on is that uh, in order to give a kind of uh, dynamic uh, experience, we are going to introduce a timer. This timer uh, will uh, be in charge to increment the speed, to set the, the update the time, update the kilometer time, and everything consistent. How can we do this within the official code? Once again, we have the main, we have the QGUI application, and we have the engine. We need to declare, declare our engine control unit. We need to export in the QML the engine control unit using the root context. Once done, 
we can load the QML and start the, the, the events loop. Once uh, uh, this is done, we can refer to the QML and check that uh, actually all of the um, all of the events have been uh, uh, sorry all of the variables has, have been related to the in um, to, to the instance that we export so the speed uh, the total kilometer just remind that every single property as you may see here as a notify so whenever this will be changed by the timer the notify event will be um, thrown and the the connect that we have in the main c++ code will cause an update of the qml interface the final result bringing all together would be something like this So basically, the, this is just a, a GIF animation, but basically what's going on is that the timer is updating the values and you can see that the speed is changing, the, the, the LEDs are moving, uh, the fuel is decreasing, and so on. Okay, this basically close uh, the overview of the integration of the of the backend now we can start uh, with the questions okay first question uh, can we access uh, the qml object directly from c++ code and uh, is it efficient uh, okay be careful first of all just remind that you can export QML objects in the C++ code. But uh, according to the philosophy that is behind uh, this approach, QML and C++ must be somehow splitted. So as long as the notify events is able to update the QML automatically, if you try from the C++ accessing the QML, you are you may not be sure that in that moment a specific object is shown. That's why it's a bit better what we provided as approach. So exporting the C++ part in the QML and use the notification to update the interfaces because this will happen in real time. It's a kind of philosophy. So keep in mind what is behind the QML and the C++ approach. The, 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 the thing is that you're supposed to split and keep it split. And so just on one side, keep updating your data and on the other side, keep the interface updating itself. Okay, it is possible to export C++ classes uh, that uh, provides some kind of graphical representation in the QML. Uh, yes, once again, you can, but uh, you are doing something that is beyond the QML philosophy. The graphic is supposed to update itself. So if you want to do something graphic, do it in QML. If for, for any reason, if you need. You can do also C++ side. You can have some kind of uh, uh, method like the quick painter, quick painter item that allow you to do something like this. But let's say that it's a bit strange in QML. Okay. Uh, can we dynamically create or load the QML objects or, shen, or shins? Uh, yeah. Um, basically, uh, the Qt framework provide uh, a component, component named loader. You can find more detail within the official Qt documentation. 
And this is exactly what, what, what you're asking. So basically you can create QML object and use or show them at runtime. Okay, another question is always required uh, uh, the event. Uh, yes, because this is the key uh, required from the QML to generate an update of the interface. So whenever you want to update an interface, you're supposed to have something that notify the change. That's why you need it. Okay, some other question uh, is, is there any performance penalties or concise penalties coding uh, in Qt rather than in C++ language? Uh, let's say that uh, I'm not aware of specific penalties in terms of real size or whatever, but the real point is different. Why you are using Qt? If you are using Qt because of the graphic, because of the libraries, you don't need to write C++ code that is not Qt oriented. And uh, if you don't need Qt, maybe you can just use your C++ framework, maybe based on GTK or whatever. But it's it's really depend of the con on the context that we are. Another question, is there any widget based on QML? Um, actually, I suppose there is a misunderstanding. The QML and the widget are two different approaches. When we talk about QML, the QML is just a graphical description of your interface. And when we talk about widget, we talk about an application like it was Qt4. And it's still possible using this approach. For example, um, if you look uh, on the Qt website and look for the camera examples, you will find two dis distinct examples. One is the QML example and one is the widget example. The widget exa example is the Qt4 approach reported nowadays. So I mean, uh, just C code, C, C++ code, no other kind of QML stuff. If you introduce the QML, you are not supposed to use the widget approach. Okay. Uh, if I don't have a display, what I can use? Uh, QML uh, uh, also provide a kind of backend that is named is known as a web interface. So basically, uh, when you compile Qt, uh, you can enable the, the compilation of a specific backend that uh, actually uh, load a uh, kind of web server, and you will be able to access this web server and uh, uh, rendering the application directly from the web server. Be careful because being a web server, uh, the, the, the run consumption is not that low. Just this. Uh, what is the favorite Linux distributions? Uh, well, um, to use Qt, whatever, uh, whatever you want is is fine. I mean, you you can use Debian, you can use Yocto, you can use Android, and you can use uh, boot to Qt. Let's say that uh, most likely, boot to Qt is the the one that is much more Qt oriented because Boot Qt is a um, distribution directly managed from the Qt team, is based on Yocto, and uh, it's targeting explicitly the Qt developers. Uh, about Boot Qt, let me add that uh, the latest release currently available, the Dunfer one, uh, that you can find uh, in our BSPs. It's actually based on Qt 6. Uh, it's uh, it's the very first six uh, uh, family version, let's say, the 6.0. So it's a kind of a work in progress. Qt is working to enlarge the support uh, 
of all the Qt Qt5 libraries to Qt6. And we expect a kind of uh, uh, full support uh, compared to the past uh, by Qt6.2 that will be the next LTS. The current uh, LTS is uh, uh, Qt5.15, that is one was 5.12. And the next one will be 6.2. And we expect for 6.2 the world support. Uh, should I avoid using uh, JavaScript in QML? Uh, you can, but uh, use it uh, carefully. I mean, it depends on what you're planning to do. If you can avoid, uh, why not avoid? <laughs> but uh, absolutely you can. It depends on what kind of overhead you're trying to introduce in the QML with the JavaScript. Okay, another question. We have one more question about uh, QML efficiency running on IMAX 6 ULL. Uh, well, the 6UL and the 6ULL together with the IMAX 7 are the only platform that do not provide the GPU. Qt was designed around the GPUs originally, uh, especially for the QML, but uh, the, the Qt team introduced a software rendering engine that allow you to use the QML also with a not GPU enabled uh, system on chip. Let's say that if you try, you will find uh, it uh, running uh, much more smooth than you would expect. Extremely efficient and it's extremely nice to be viewed. But keep in mind that you don't have a GPU. This is done efficiently using your CPU. So you can observe a high CPU load. Okay, let's see if we have other questions. Um, which version, uh, which cute version we can use with the Nano? Uh, basically, we do provide the specific, uh, specific version uh, of cute that are related to the BSP you're using. Usually, you can check uh, in boot QT, we explicitly declared this in the in the in the BSP. For Yocto, you can check uh, the MetaQt5 branch uh, of your distribution and uh, check which is the current uh, provided uh, version. Uh, it's possible to migrate an app with two widgets step by step uh, to QML. Uh, yes, it's possible. Uh, it's not that easy because basically you need the, to understand that it's a completely redesign, not from a graphical perspective, but, a, but from a code perspective. You don't have widgets. You just have the QML that manages the graphics and uh, uh, the, the C++ code that manage the, the backends. You may want to check once again the camera example. The, both the example that Qt provide uh, do the same thing, but looks quite different. Okay. This may be another. Okay, okay. Okay, it looks that we are out of our time. Just let me spend uh, a few seconds to leave you our references. This is in our website, website.com, our sales email. We have the portal for the customer, the wiki, and our GitHub repositories. All available free of charge, obviously. Okay, 
So thanks everybody and hope to see you to our next webinar.